welcome back. A new poll has found that people from ethnic minorities regard the UK as a better place to live than other Western countries. But it turns out that nearly half of the people who answered the survey by think tank British Future were in fact white. Joining me now to discuss the findings, Rafe Hadel Manku, a public policy consultant, hello there, and down the line, author and broadcaster Nels Abbey. I know that Nels is incensed by these statistics and doesn't like the story very much at all. So let's go to him first. Nels, um, you don't believe it to be true or you don't like the way this survey has been conducted or what is it that gets your goat so much? I think the survey is absurd. I think the survey is, is, as, is as credible as asking a Man United fan if Man Manchester United is the best team to support. It doesn't really tell you anything because most of the people, even the survey was split almost down the line too, a thousand, quote, non-white people and a thousand, 900 something, 999 or so um, white people. And... Um, but the problem with the survey is that asking most people, the white people asked about it, probably don't know what it feels like to be a United, to be an ethnic minority in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the black and brown people who are asked or so, the ethnic minorities who are asked about it, probably don't, most of them probably don't have much of an understanding of what it feels like to be an ethnic minority in places such as France, Germany, or the United States. So it was a poll that, in my view, was serving the purpose of um, pretty much patriotism signaling or or honours baiting for the people who put the poll together, as opposed to actually trying to tell us anything credible about British society. I did wonder where else in the Western Hemisphere would be better to live if you come from an ethnic minority. And I should say that I do. I'm Jewish, as everybody probably knows. And, and I was trying to think, where else would be better? Do you have thoughts about other countries in the Western Hemisphere that you think might be more congenial, less racist, more comfortable, more happier to live in than, than, than the United Kingdom? Of course, there's many different places. I think, again, so it presents as many different places and there's many different things. It depends on who you ask, too. Because, again, if you ask the people who suffered from the, who were the victims of the horrors of the Windrush scandal, uh, whether Britain's a nice place to live in or so, they'll probably say no. If you ask people, uh, but the problem with it also, look, there's certain places in America that I find amazing to go to. I spend a lot of my fair share of time in America, and I enjoy certain places. I enjoy living in Atlanta. I enjoy staying in Atlanta. I've never lived there before. I enjoy going to Miami. I enjoy going to Los Angeles, to New York, San Francisco, you name it. Uh, I enjoy parts of France too. I enjoy parts of Germany. Berlin has become a hotspot for black Britons to go to. But the key thing about it is this is that the poll itself is inherently ridiculous because it doesn't serve any purpose it doesn't really tell you anything about britain it is pretty much just in my view it's, it creates a very very skewed and silly debate that doesn't really help us it creates this sort of patriotic one-upmanship as opposed to actually attacking um or, or as opposed to actually doing anything to better our society well, let's ask uh, my guest in the studio, Dr. Um, Hedel Manku, what do you think of this? I mean, do, you, do you agree that it's a peculiarly skewed survey revealing something that's not very, uh, very illustrative of anything much? No, I'm, I'm surprised that anyone could disagree with it because all that it does is it sustains and supports virtually every survey that's been conducted over the past few years, if not several decades. Most notably, the World Values Survey, which is a decades-old survey conducted in 80 countries around the world. In the UK, it's King's College London that conducts it. And it asks what's believed to be the definitive question, would you be opposed to somebody of a different race living next to you? Mm -hmm. And the top three countries in the world, for them being the least racist and most tolerant, are Sweden, Britain and Brazil, which is, of course, famously multiracial. Uh -huh. um, Contrast that with France, where 22% of French people would have an issue with that. You know, Nels has mentioned Berlin. There was a great exodus to, to Berlin from London by creative peoples, including many black people, where rent was one quarter of what it was in the UK. And their experience universally, from those I've spoken to, and it's been also been featured on BBC, has been how racist they found Berlin and how people were staring at them and making comments. And coming from London, they were expecting to be received by another global city and, and accepted just the same way that they are here. There's a huge, there's a huge disparity there. The countries that are the most uh, tolerant are actually those that come from British descent, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the UK. These are the countries where people feel most encouraged to come to. That's why there are such high immigration rates to those countries. And I would like, like to challenge anyone to suggest countries that are better to live in than, than Britain is. If you are a member of an ethnic minority, we have one of the world's highest levels of interracial marriage, for example. There are so many indices which show us how, how in, fully integrated uh, ethnic minorities are in Britain compared to, say, 30, 40 years ago. Nels, what do you make of that? That actually these places that you, 
you suggest to be a real pleasure and, a, and, and a, a better alternative and a better place to live than the United Kingdom really aren't at all. These are the people who would say that they wouldn't like someone from a different race to live next door to them. Uh, again, so even uh, the gentleman um, eloquently mentioned Brazil, for example. Brazil has significant issues as far as race is concerned. Um, significant issues as far as race is concerned also too. Um, Sweden itself, the treatment of Somali people there. I think the problem that we have with this poll, and I don't want to give the poll any credibility or credence, because I don't think it deserves it. I feel that the, what we should be looking at also is not the is not the comparison of how far um, the proverbial knife has been stuck upside somebody, it's into somebody. Also, it's the comparison of it's how do we actually remove the knife altogether from all peoples, all ethnic minorities, all racialized peoples, regardless of where they may be. Um, this one-upmanship or so in terms of actually okay well britain in our perspective actually nicer than um is nicer than say america or so but if you ask african americans the exact same question they'll probably come up with the exact same answer about america in fact they often say the exact same uh the white i mean it, it re cr crashly racist america and one of the key things that often used to be said is that you place these same people african americans that anywhere else in the world or so they'll come running back to america it's, just got to, it's, just got it's, to it's, say, it's, the doctor's nodding his head gravely or shaking his shaking, head gravely. Yeah, no, shaking no. his head gravely. Yes, he doesn't look as if he agrees with the word you just said. Well, the, the American, the very respected nonpartisan Pew Research Centre, which I think everyone can support, says that it has its global attitude survey and British people are amongst the most likely to say that it doesn't matter if you weren't born in this country to be truly British. Mm -hmm. uh, the worst countries for racism we now know full well, India is number one, followed by Jordan. China, Japan, South Korea, horrendously racist, and Sub-Saharan in Africa, people forget how racist Africans are towards other Africans, mm -hmm. including within countries, be it the Bantu or the Hutus and the Tutsis. There's a huge problem around the world, and we should be celebrating the fact that Britain has managed to actually uh, create a space where everyone can feel welcome and at home, as this survey proves. Rather than always trying to spin a negative on something, why don't we actually celebrate how great it is to be in this country? Nels, do you feel at home? This Back is your Britain, home. I want to be here. I wouldn't be here if I, if I didn't feel like oh. Britain. I'm British. I'm very British, dare I say. Um, but also British Nigerian. And the gentleman, I think the gentleman has a bit of a misunderstanding of what race actually is. So the Tutsis, the Hutus and the Tutsis <laughs> are actually not different races in the slightest bit. They, they're they not different races in the slightest bit. And also, too, when you look at uh, some of these African countries that we see what we're describing as racist towards each other. So it's a very, very poor misunderstanding of racism as it is as a result of the fact that they're often not different races. If you go to a place like South Africa, then you're looking at a very, very different concept altogether. But to me, look, I'm at home in Britain. I feel at home in Britain. But I also feel at home. The gentleman mentioned Jordan, for example. I had the loveliest time the time I spent in Jordan. Uh, from, I drove from Amman from, from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, uh, right the way down to Akaba, met people right across the country. They treated me like I was a, a, a arriving hero. They were lovely to me. But the key thing about it is this, is that, <laughs> I keep repeating about it, this poll is as credible as asking an Arsenal fan, which I am, uh, is being an Arsenal fan better than being, say, a Crystal Palace fan? And I'll say, yes, it is. Are you with me? And the Crystal Palace fan will probably say, yes, it is. So if, from their perspective too, and they'll have whatever excuse they want to find in order to actually justify their perspective. But the reality is that it creates banter more so than it actually creates progress and i think that's the key thing for me here that i'm looking for actual progress I've, i'm an actual solid serious a dedicated anti-racist but does a, but does a report ever but does a report ever engender in and of itself progress it's a report so it's a survey so it gives you it's, some kind of result or statistics a report isn't the recipe for improvement or a strategy or a technique or any kind of plan it's a report isn't it you can't expect it to engender progress by itself but the poll is pointless, is the point I'm making. The poll utterly serves no purpose. It's just, it's pretty much just, it's almost, as I describe it, it's middle class misyism. It's clout chasing, or so it's honours baiting. It is something that you know you, you can actually put out there where you're going to get a particular answer, you feed it to the right press or so, and bingo, come 1 January or 1 June or so, you'll find your name on the honours roll. And that's why I think British Futures were doing or so. I think it served no purpose whatsoever to the betterment and enhancement of the lives of minorities in this country or anywhere else in the world look britain if you take a look at it right now britain has a has the most diverse government of any western nation i i've in, in my lifetime and it's a, I, in any lifetime dare i say it's actually fascinating to watch but it also has one of the most racist governments too at the same time oh. it has one government well, let's that's just bring in uh, the dog to what do you think sir? racist policies i've ever seen i don't think he's going to listen quietly to any more of that are you
I mean, look, everything this government does is all about um, headlines and it never actually, it's too incompetent to be racist because it never actually gets anything done. Uh, but as I've just pointed out over the last few minutes, all of the evidence, the overwhelming majority of the evidence says that, of course, people in this country are happy to live in a society which is so tolerant of diversity and ethnic minorities. You know, a black person living in China or Japan will have a hugely different experience to living in this country because those homogenous societies are unbelievably racist, as we've seen from no, famous that, commercials no, that, and so forth the, in, in the past. That is the problem. And, the, and anecdotes that, that the problem. So I've no. been, Now, I happen to know people who live in China, and they live a very, very happy life's life. I happen to know black people. I've been to Japan multiple times. Japan is... Pound for pound, the loveliest place I've ever been to. Well, that's because you're a lovely person. But that's, not the, that's not the case for lots of people. I have, a Chinese, I have a Chinese company with Chinese clients. And let me say, I've had some very eyebrow-raising experiences from my Chinese clients. And the same goes for others in, who are in the, in the Middle East too. Your anecdotal experience is lovely, but it's not evidence sufficient to actually uh, turn the tide of the polls and surveys that I've just quoted you. Well, well, I don't. Really, the problem with it is that I'm, I'm not. I, I, I haven't studied the other polls or surveys you're speaking of. But if there's anything like the poll that we, that we, that brings us here today, then I question their credibility. Now, the key thing about me, the key thing I say about this, is that when I go to places or something, and you might say that it's anecdotal, or so, but the plural of anecdotes, of course, data. And I think that when you go to places like Japan or so, you'll often find that actually Japan, in particular, was one of pound for pound the nicest places I've ever been to. I've never been treated better than anywhere I've been to in I my life. I think we're having Japan. a tour. But a tour of your a tour of your holiday history, Nels. I'm glad you're so well travelled. Absolutely, my, the wonderful time in Japan, a fabulous time in Brazil. I've only ever been to Bournemouth. I'm just sitting here jealous as hell. I wish I'd travelled more widely. Listen, it's a real pleasure having you on. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Let me tell you what's coming up.